All right, welcome to Mr. Knuckles' guitar program. This is lesson number one. It's going to be Sunshine by Nazareth. It's designed mainly to practice a D to a G chord, and it's going to sound a little bit like this if you don't know the song. Okay, here's G as in goat. Back to D as a dog. Hi everybody and welcome to Mr. Knuckles Guitar Program. First, right off the bat, if you need to tune, take a look at the time signature coming up and there's a little section that will help you tune your guitar if you don't have your own tuner or you don't know how to tune it. And uh, also, I'm including the chords so you can look in the time signature for that as well. This is a program that I've developed at school. I'm an intermediate teacher. I teach grade 7s and 8s and I've been teaching them to play guitar for about 15 years now. It's a pretty successful program, and I'm quite confident that if you follow along and you put a little time and effort into it, you can become a guitar player. I've seen hundreds of kids become decent guitar players in the course of one 40-minute lesson per week over the course of two school years, and I get some kids that are playing guitar really, really well by the time they leave grade 8. So if you're interested in playing guitar, this is a great program I think. Just keep your ears to the ground and pay attention to Facebook if you're catching this on YouTube. I hate to say subscribe to my channel. Everybody says that but I mean if you want to go through the program that would be the best way to do it is just subscribe and then you'll get the videos as they come out. I'm hoping to do this over the next little while while we all go through this pandemic. Anyhow I don't want to talk for too long. I want to get straight to teaching. Okay Sunshine is always the song that I start with in the music class at school because it's just such an easy straight strumming song with a couple of easy chords but unfortunately it's been blocked by iMovie so I can't use the recording of the song directly in iMovie. I've had to use an old video that I made years ago. The sound quality is not that great and I apologize for that. It'll get better. Right off the bat you're going to need a D chord. A D chord. First finger goes on the third string. Count from the bottom. This is the G string. Second fret. Middle finger goes on the bottom string at the second fret. And your third finger, your ring finger, goes on the second string at the third fret. You don't play the top string, so you want to mute that out. I mean, the other option is to just only play those bottom five strings. But that's tough to do when you're strumming to just miss that top string every time. So the better way to do it is to flip your thumb over top of the neck and just touch that top string. You mute that string out, and now you can play it. It's not going to wreck the chord. Otherwise, if you play it, that note is not part of the chord. And I don't know if you can hear that that's just wrecking the chord. I've told my class over and over again that no guitarist ever plays a D chord this way. However, I was watching a James Taylor video. For those of you who don't know James Taylor, he's a super famous folk player. And he plays his D chord this way. I was blown away by it because I've never seen it done by any guitarist ever. So this is how you play your D. First finger on the third, second finger on the first, and third finger on the second. Second fret, third fret. No top string. There's a D chord. All right? And this song just starts with a D chord, strumming one strum at a time. Just all down strokes. All right? So that's how we're going to start. Actually, there's the odd double strum here and there, but don't worry about it. Just do one strum at a time. Okay, here's G as in goat. Following from there, change from a D chord to a G chord. And that's really what this whole song is about. I mean, there are a couple of extra chords in this song, but this song is really practicing an easy strumming pattern and just changing from one chord to the next. Okay, G chord. Three different ways to play a G chord, and whenever they come up in a song, I'll show you which one to use, but I'll show you all three right now. This is what it should sound like. All right, again, whenever you make a chord, play the strings individually to see if they're ringing. For this G chord, you're going to have both your pinky and your ring finger on the bottom two strings, 
pinky on the bottom, obviously, ring finger on the second string, the B string, at the third fret, and your middle finger on the top string at the third fret. So all those fingers are on the third fret, bottom two strings, top string, and then your first finger is going to be on the second fret on the fifth string, okay? And it should sound like that. So from D, notice that your ring finger is on the B string, the second string at the third fret, for the D chord, and also it's going to be there for the G chord. So you're going to use this finger as kind of a pivot point between those two chords, the D and the G. And that's really what we're going to concentrate on for this song, just changing from D to G. From D, all you have to do is drop your pinky down, put your, your middle finger up to the top string. Those are all on the third fret. This finger here goes on the second fret at the, on the fifth string. And then you can just go back and forth. I would say practice that a bunch of times and then we'll start playing the song again. Actually, there's the odd double strum here and there, but don't worry about it. Just do one strum at a time. Okay, here's G as in goat. Back to D as a dog. Goat. Dog. And here. Okay, let's try that all again. Actually, there's the odd double strum here and there, but don't worry about it. Just do one strum at a time. Okay, here's G as in goat. Back to D as a dog. Goat. Dog. Next, you need an A chord. Okay, the A chord. The A chord is second string, third string, and fourth string, all at the second fret, that's it. You can play it however you want, and that's the reason that there are no numbers on the diagram, because you can choose to play it however you want. Some people choose to play it like that. I actually play it like this. I take a D chord, and I just move my whole hand onto those second, third, and fourth strings at the second fret. I've just developed that way. Some people play it like that. I can't play it like that. My fingers are too fat. Okay, but don't forget, whenever, however you play it, you should be playing the strings individually to see if they all ring out. And if you have problems, don't forget, there are three ways to solve it. Either press harder, make sure your fingers are not touching strings they shouldn't touch. All right, for instance, if my pinky's touching that bottom string, then it's not going to ring. I have to reform my hand and get that finger out of the way. Or to make sure that you're playing as close to the frets as you can. All right, there's an A chord. So your D, G, and A. A great way to practice is just take a few minutes before we start playing again and just go D, G, A. D, G, A. I know I'm doing that fast. You do it at whatever speed you can do it. Just try and make sure that when you're playing the chords, each of the strings rings fairly clean. Actually, there's the odd double strum here and there, but don't worry about it. Just do one strum at a time. Okay, here's G as in goat. Back to D as a dog. Goat. Dog. And here's A right here. Top string thing. Okay, there's another little part to this song that you need to know. It's plucking or playing one string at a time. It's the top string, and it's going to go third fret, second fret, 
open and then to a D chord, right? I'm gonna call that the A thing, so listen for that in the video. Third fret, second fret, open and D chord, all right? Actually, there's the odd double strum here and there, but don't worry about it, just do one strum at a time. Okay, here's G as in goat. Back to D as a dog. Goat. Dog. And here's A right here. Top string thing. Third fret, second fret, open, and D chord. Goat. Dog. Goat. Dog. Here's the A chord right here. Top string. Third fret, second fret, open, and D chord. Goat. Back to dog. Goat. Dog. Here's A. Top string. Third fret, second fret, open, and dog. Okay, we're going to change things up a little bit. You're going to go to A right here. A chord. Back to D. Back to A. D is a dog. A again. Okay. The only other chord you need for this song is an E chord. E chord. Third string at the first fret with your first finger. And then you can choose either combination to play the fourth and fifth strings at the second fret with your two middle fingers, all right? Again, don't forget that whenever you're playing a chord for the first bunch of times, you should play the strings individually to see if they're ringing properly and fix them however you need to fix them if they're not ringing properly. Actually, there's the odd double strum here and there, but don't worry about it. Just do one strum at a time. Okay, here's G as in goat. Back to D as a dog. Goat. Dog. And here's A right here. Top string thing. Third fret, second fret, open, and D chord. Goat. Dog. Goat. Dog. Here's the A chord right here. Top string. Third fret, second fret, open, and D chord. Goat. Back to dog. Goat. Dog. Here's A. Top string. Third fret, second fret, open, and dog. Okay, we're going to change things up a little bit. You're going to go to A right here. A chord. Back to D. Back to A. D is a dog. A again. Okay, here's 
the elephant chord. E is an elephant. Okay, just stop playing for a sec. Get ready to play a D. Let the drums play out a little bit. Here we go. D. Goat. Dog. Goat. Dog. A. Top string. Third fret, second fret, open, and dog. Okay, so the song changes around and goes into a solo that is all weird and different. So there's no sense trying to play it. So that's it. Just a great song to practice your D to your G, back and forth. It will get b boring very quickly, as you can imagine. This is the first song I teach my class at school, and uh, they're bored with it by about the first month in. That's it for this lesson. The next lesson is Traveling Soldier by the Dixie Chicks. And I hope to get it out in the next couple of days. Have a great day. If you need to tune along with me, here are the strings. Top string. Okay. Next string down, the fifth, the A string. Next string down, the fourth string, or the D. Next, the third, or the G string. Second from the bottom, this is the B string. bottom string the first, the, the high E. There you go. That's probably not going to be perfect unless you have a really good ear, but it'll be close enough for you. Okay, clip-on tuners. They're great. They work fantastic. They're fairly cheap. They're super efficient. You just leave them clipped on the headstock of your guitar. Just spring-loaded little thing like that. Just leave it clipped on there. When you turn it on, and play a note, the vibration of the string vibrates your guitar, vibrates the headstock, and then sends a signal to the tuner, and the tuner recognizes that vibration as a note, and it will tell you what note you're playing. Now, you have to know the notes that you're targeting when you're tuning the guitar, so don't forget from the bottom up, the small string is E, then it goes B, G, D, A, and E. So the top string is also an E, which is what we're gonna tune right now. It's registering a C, and so you just want to go through the alphabet. It just follows chronologically through the alphabet. So if you start at C and you tune up counterclockwise on the tuner, you're going to go to D, and you can see it continues up until it goes to D sharp and starts again. And the gauge goes through the motions until it gets to the end of the D sharp, and then it goes automatically to an E, and your target for this particular tuner is the green line right in the middle. So now we're perfectly in tune with an E, and then you would go through the rest of the strings and tune them likewise. All right.